Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in for another uh, project. We are finally back working on the 1993 Rocky Mountain Altitude. So if you've been a follower of the channel for a while, you'll know that I started this project about a year ago. And I've been on the hunt for this red race face headset ever since. Um, I'm trying to do... Uh, yellow and red as much as possible build on this with Canadian companies. So hence the race face headset. So now that we have a race face headset, we're going to be able to get that installed. Um, I also have Synchros Barn bar ends, which were on this when I got it. So we'll be putting those back on. Um, for the red fork, um, it's part, but I've been leaning towards this Manitou Answer tie spring because the red is a good match. This would have had a paint matched Meg 20 or 21, I think Meg 20 fork when it was a team because this is a team bike so as a race bike it would have had a red paint matched um rock shock but we're going to be using this manitou for now most likely so that'll be going on here we're going to actually rebuild this today and get this set put on here um and then We'll be, I'll be doing a synchro stem to match the bar and bar ends and the seat post. I haven't yet decided on wheels, but um, try to find some Canadian wheel brands. Obviously, Synchros, Nuke Proof. Is Nuke Proof Canadian or is that US? I think Nuke Proof is US, but it could be Canada. Let me check. So I double check, New Proof is from Michigan, which makes sense. I have met somebody from Michigan who talked about New Proof. So I have to figure out some Canadian wheels. It'll probably just be, I've had some Synchros rims, but I laced those into my clunker. So I'll have to track down some hubs and some wheels. Um, but for now, we're just gonna be getting the fork rebuilt and the fork Head and headset put on and we'll start from there. Okay, the Manitou answer tie spring is a elastomer based fork with obviously tie springs. And we've cleaned most of it already. I've been kind of working on this slowly when I've had some free time and I haven't filmed it, but there's a few tips and tricks that I didn't know when I've rebuilt my previous elastomer based forks that now I know that we're gonna talk about today. So when the elastomers melt, they can get really hard to come off, um, both on the outside and on the inside of our lowers. Well, yeah, and the lowers in here. So there's gook in there and on the outsides and insides of the stanchions. So we need to clean that. And it is kind of a troublesome issue because nothing really works well. But what does work well is a heat gun. Because what we're gonna do is we're just gonna heat up the parts that we need to clean. And that makes the elastomer residue much easier to wipe off with a rag then when it's cold. So we're gonna heat up the parts that we need to clean and then we're gonna wipe off or wipe out the rest of the um, residue. And then we are going to put the new elastomers in, get this fork all built up, get the head side on and the fork on, and then we're gonna to start to see how this is gonna to come together and maybe I'll be able to find a stem and we'll continue getting the bar and the bar put on. So. First case, um, turn your heat gun on. I just have it on the middle heat setting. So 
I don't want to start any fires. Um, get yourself some rags, and then we're just going to slowly heat up a piece at a time. So now that we have everything clean, we are going to put the fork back together. Now I will have more of these, so I will take one apart and do a full rebuild video. So we're just gonna do a quick put together. Very important to have your SRAM butter, your grease for everything, and you wanna be fairly liberal with the use of this. So, everything clean the insides clean thanks to the heat gun and we're just gonna get uh, lathering up and put this all back together so I'm just gonna do this quickly and we'll do a more thorough um, build on a, the, another fork from the beginning saying so, I took this one apart uh, Took this one apart without y'all. But just coat everything. It's slippery stuff, so try not to drop anything. Drop it here at the shop, it gets covered in dog hair. You gotta start all over again. And we're also gonna put some on the fork leg so that that slides in easy. Oh. We'll put our spring in once we lube this up. So we're just gonna, this is just to reduce friction. Just put that in. Move this one all up. I'm doing all this so that I have something to push on so that I can slide these bumpers on. So now that the bumpers are on. Oh, I'm gonna put a little bit around this seal. make everything slide in nicely. Okay. One side in. Just a little greasy. Second side is the bigger diameter bumper because that slides on the damper. Like so. This end threads into here, so this, again, our grease around this seal, and some on the stanchion just so everything slides together smoothly. And now we 
you have to align this up. Come through the hole, which oh, ow. there we go. So now we gotta get this piece. Thread it in. Oh, that's one size too big. Now we have to put the crown on. There we go. So now we just want to make sure this one goes on this side. Slide that in there. Press and turn. Right. These are plastic, so you don't want to strip them out. So you want to make sure you're pressing down until you have enough threads comfortably threaded in. And voila. We have a put together high SX that just needs a little bit of a wipe down because it's kind of greasy. And what I find works good for that is some rubbing alcohol. Now, before we go out riding and destroy something, we just want to make sure we tighten these back up. We're going to want to get the torque wrench out because these have a specific torque setting. It's a safety right here. I would hate to imagine what would happen if you didn't have these tight enough. So let me find the torque reading quick. Okay, so the chart that I found online isn't exactly for this Manitou, but it's for a similar Manitou and that one says 12 to 15 newton meters. My little torque wrench goes to 14. So we'll do 14. We're going to get this wiped off one more time and we're going to get it installed. And I always want to make sure to Turn your torque wrench back to zero too. Helps them not get uh, worn out. So sadly, I forgot to hit record while I was installing the race face cups. I was trying to get them lined up perfectly race face to race face. They look, they look pretty good. It's maybe not perfect. So it might be over a little bit, but it looks really close. So next step is installing the crown race on the fork. So I'm gonna go grab the tools so that I can install the crown race on the fork and we will get the fork installed on the bike and then we'll get to admire and see how the bike looks. So when putting the crown race on, again, we wanna apply some grease. Take our crown race. Set it on right. Find the proper tool, guide, and then 
you don't use a hammer, okay? So much easier. Get your metal plate on your truing stand. You could do your concrete floor if it's in your garage. And when the tone changes, you know that it's seated all the way. Easiest way to install a crown race. If you're trying to use a hammer, and I've talked about this before, if you're trying to use a hammer, you're holding the fork, swinging the hammer, your arm is moving, and you're just not getting the driving force onto the crown race as easy as if you just flip this thing upside down and whack, whack. So it's the tip for crown race installation. Ooh, I'm worried about this. I worried about this. Huh. That's, ooh. I need to man, I need to get to a tape measure. That might not be enough. I had worried, but we got we have options. Do a crown race swap a Rooney. Okay, so that's thirty-five. It's probably enough for a stem, but let's go. Let's go dig in the basement, see if we can find a fork with more steer. We are down in the basement, and this is where the Manitous live. I spotted one. That looks longer, so I measured, oops, I measured the one we have upstairs is 170 millimeters. So anything longer, oh geez, anything longer than 170. Oh, there we go. That's 200. That'll give us an extra 30 mils. We're already at 35, so we at 65. So we'll be able to run us some spacers and have plenty of room for stem. So. We're gonna pop this crown race off, uh, this crown off. Well, to pop the crown race off that we just put on, take this crown off, put this crown on that fork, and then this will be the fork that I'll rebuild to show you how to rebuild a Manitou tie spring from the beginning. Works out perfectly. So let's go and knock that out. So we'll be rebuilding this fork together show you how it's done but right now we're just after this nice long crown race I think I knew you know last year that I needed to Swap these, but I forgot between now and then, which, you know, it's a long time ago, so it's understandable. We want to make sure we add our boots this time, and you just got to get them seated down there. Do the same on this side. Like so. Now we're going to install our crown. It's time for take two. Will we have more than enough steer? Oh yeah. Look at that. Let me get a zip. I need to grab a zip tie quick. I zip tie this up so that I can step back and take a look at it. Is 
There we are. The rebuilt Manitou FS. No, not FS, SX. Ty SX. Rebuilt. With canties, because of course we're going to use canties. The race face headset installed. The previously installed red race face crank. Now we're going to change the saddle. We got to get a synchro stem or a red race face stem or a race face stem, I guess, um, to go to our synchros bar and our synchros bar ends. And uh, group set. I'm not sure what we're going to use yet. Probably XTR. So I already am on the hunt for XTR for the Yeti. So this also needs XTR. So just a lot of XTR is going to need to be found. But this project is really coming together. I'm quite happy with how it's looking. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, update on the Rocky Mountain, kind of a quick reassemble of a Manitou SX. I will be doing a full video rebuild on the other SX to show you how to do it. It's fairly simple, and it'll be that should be a fun video. Um, hopefully your projects are going smoothly and you're finding your parts. If not, make sure to check out our website. We have over 1,300 parts listed on our shop and more added weekly. I'll put a link below for that. Um, have a great rest of your day.